Hey folks, Chris here from Incident.io. I'm going to give you a really quick run through of what it looks like to use the product to run an incident from end to end. Now what we're building here is not a slack bot for engineers. We're building what we think is the very, very best way for entire organizations to respond to and learn from incidents. Let's get started. Now obviously this isn't going to be a real incident, um, so you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit, but uh, hopefully the things you see here will be applicable to incidents in your organization. So first things first, we sit within your Slack workspace behind a single slash command, and that's slash incident, um, although you can use slash ink for short. Um, and when you do that from anywhere in your Slack workspace, you'll come to a screen like this one. We ask for a minimal set of information here to keep it really streamlined uh, getting into the incident process. Um, so in this case, let's say something like, you know, payments are failing. We get asked to provide a severity here too. Um, so we can choose major in this case, it sounds pretty bad. And you see that this text underneath updated. So I have a good steer of what major means for my organization. Both the severity titles and the text that exists underneath is totally configurable to, to however you want them for your organization. Uh, the final bit on this screen here is to select the visibility of this incident. So we support public incidents, which are sort of the default, um, and then private incidents for, for managing things like vulnerabilities or anything else that shouldn't really be disclosed across your organization. Now, when we hit create, a couple of things will have happened. The first of which is that we will have announced that this incident has happened into this central announcement channel, which in this case is configured to be the incidents channel. Now, this is the kind of place where we'd expect the whole organization to be hanging out. It's the kind of thing where, you know, something goes wrong, this would be your first port of call to see if someone else is already on the case. And if not, you're prompt to declare it yourself. The other thing we've done then is to create a dedicated channel for this incident where we can then manage the response from. Right, here we are at the beginning of the incident channel. Now, the purpose of this channel is to make it incredibly easy to coordinate your response and to collate all of the context about the incident all in one place. We really wanna make it easy to get up to speed as quickly as possible. So the first thing that we will post in here is this set of quick actions. These are the kinds of things that you would find yourself doing in almost every single incident. And so we put them just a button click away. The first thing we might wanna do here is to assign the lead. So I can click this button and say, hey, I'm the incident lead. You can see I get this private message to myself, which is uh, providing some instructions on exactly what that means for my organization. And all of that is totally configurable. So you can provide guidance on however you want folks to respond. The other thing I might want to do is set the summary. So currently we have a title which is payments are failing, but that's not super helpful for the rest of the organization. So in this case, I'm saying customers are reporting issues, making card payments in store, but online payments appear to be working just fine. Just a useful bit of additional context for folks so they know what's going on. Let's fast forward a little bit. So I've done some basic debugging at this point, and I think I found a dashboard which has highlighted the problem that I'm seeing, but I'm also at the limit of my knowledge and I'm not entirely sure how to proceed. So this is exactly the kind of time when I would uh, go and escalate to someone to get some additional help. So we integrate with systems like PagerDuty and OpsGenie to make it incredibly easy for you to get hold of folks at any time of day without having to leave this Slack channel. And to do that, we simply type slash incident from the channel and we're taken to this screen that's called incident home. Now this is the jump off point to anywhere else in the product. Um, and we can either navigate places by selecting from the list or we can just type exactly what we want to do and it will bring it up. We'll get some additional information here about how to use this command in future if we want to do it a little bit quicker. But we can hit go at this point and jump straight into this, uh, this screen here. Now we get to supply a little message here. This will be what gets read out to them over the phone. We get to choose the service which is impacted, which in this case was the database. So I'm gonna choose that one. And you can see that we now pull through your linked escalation policy from PageDuty. But we also let you override things here. So in this case, I'm gonna try and get hold of this Chris Evans chap. He sounds knowledgeable on databases and I'll hit escalate. Now you'll see that we will post in the channel to let you know that we've escalated to them, but we'll also tell you exactly how we've got hold of them. So you can see right now that I'm being called so now our incident team's assembled, we need to figure out who's gonna be doing what to resolve this incident. And to help with that, we've built a lightweight coordination mechanism into Slack that we call incident actions. Once again, we get there with the single slash incident command, we can type exactly what we want to do and we'll jump right to the right place. Now, this is the action screen. We can see any actions that have been logged already and any follow-ups that have been logged too. So follow-ups are the kind of things that need to happen after an incident. Think about you know, rolling back a change that was a temporary fix to get things over the line. Let's add a new action though. So in here, we can choose the description. In this case, I think we need to reboot the database server. And I'm gonna leave the assignee blank because I don't know who's gonna pick this up. When I hit create, you'll see I'm taken back here and we can see that this action now exists on this screen. And if we dismiss this, we can see that it's also been shared into the channel. What's more, it's been shared with a button here so someone in this channel can claim this action. It's a really useful way of sort of self-organizing around the problem. You can just create actions and when folks are free and able to pick something up, they can just claim it as so. 
wind the clock forward again, and it looks like this incident might be turning a corner. We've uh, rebooted the database and things look like they're recovering too. So now would be a really great time for us to send an incident update. Now incident updates are a way for us to package up what's been going on in this incident and to share them both with folks here in the channel, but also externally to anyone following along. What's more, with incident workflows, you can also plug these updates into things like SMS messages or email uh, distribution lists. Now, we can see here that incident IO has actually come and prompted me for an update because I haven't shared one yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now on this screen, we get to configure all the various parameters of this update. So first of all, if the severity has changed over time, I can change that here. I can also change the status. So in this case, I'm moving from investigating through to monitoring. I can share some more details here. So in this instance, we've rebooted the database and things look like they're recovering. We're monitoring the situation. Finally, I get to choose when I want Instance IO to come back and prompt me for the next update. So a really useful way to establish a regular cadence of providing updates in this incident. When I hit update, you'll see that this gets shared in the channel. Everyone can see what's going on, but it also gets posted underneath this main thread out here too. Okay, let's change view for a minute. And let's imagine we're the kind of person who is interested in staying across the key developments of this incident, but doesn't want to add noise to the Slack channel. So with the incident homepage, you can get a full view of everything that's going on in this incident. So from what status we're in, whether we're investigating or fixing or monitoring, we can see the summary of the incident, what's going on, and we can see who's involved here too. What's more, we start building up a timeline for you, both automatically, but we also allow you to manually add things here. So we can see exactly when this incident was reported, when I became the lead. We can see these messages here that I've pinned and that's added them to the timeline too. Any images that are shared in the channel, those are added to your timeline automatically and things like actions and debug messages can be sent here too. Right, so let's imagine the fix that we've put in place is watertight and we're ready to close this incident off. So we can do that from within Slack with a slash incident command, but we can also do it from this UI as well. So we come up here, hit markers closed, and we're presented with an option now to make sure that this incident data is accurate. So we can make sure that the title reflects exactly what happened, similar story with the summary. We can check the severity makes sense and that the lead is set correctly. This all looks good to me, so I'm ready to close this off. Okay, so I've just hit the generate postmortem button on the incident homepage and I'm taken to what is a really great starter for a postmortem document. So we've pulled across all of the information that we've been gathering throughout this incident, things like the severity, the summary, who's involved and various timestamps of the statuses. But we've also pulled across the entire timeline and that will contain all of these events that we have inferred as interesting throughout the incident, as well as those messages that you've pinned from the channel, potentially saving yourself hours of copying and pasting time. We'll copy across all things like images here, as well as any debug messages and actions that you might have added to this incident. All right, well, hopefully that's been an interesting overview of how to run an incident with us. Um, there's clearly parts of the product we haven't been able to show you today, things like automating parts of your response with workflows and the kind of rich insights that we can give you into your organization when you start declaring incident with us. We'll save those for another time. For now, if you wanna get started, just head to incident.io and hit get started today. Thanks.